Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, the founder of the completeherbalguide.com. And today we have a very special guest that I'm very excited to introduce to you. This is Julianne Arena, and she is a double board certified physician, educator, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and the mother of two teenagers. She received her undergraduate degree at Harvard University and graduated from Boston University School of Medicine. And Dr. Arena is a certified Cleovana specialist committed to female sexual health. And so today we're going to talk about um, female health and, and intimacy. And how about you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do so everybody knows a little bit more about you. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. So my story um, began in the traditional medical world. I was an OBGYN practicing um, for 15 years, delivering babies, doing surgeries, enjoying helping women in all stages of life. And about um, six years ago, I went to a conference on integrative medicine and women's health. And it was there that I sort of had my aha moment. And I realized that there were so many more tools in the toolbox right. that we don't learn in traditional medical school yeah. and residency, even as an OBGYN, right? right? So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I would come back every night from that conference in my hotel room saying, all right, we need to do this and we got to bring this into our practice and we need to do all of these things. And I came back to my practice with so much excitement, only really to be squelched and well, what, what are you talking about? We don't need to do this. And I, I would say, we need to grow another branch of the tree. Yes, we need the traditional conventional medicine. We need emergencies. We need surgeries. But there's this whole other branch that we don't talk about that we need. And so the, you know, forever learner that I am, I went back and I got a fellowship in integrative and functional medicine. And I really tried to see my patients in that model. But as you know, in the traditional medical model, we're tasked with seeing 30 people a day right. if you're lucky eight for 15 minutes and trying to get that all done. And I, I wasn't succeeding. And I would, you know, want to talk to my patient about, well, how's your sleep? And how's your poop? And, you know, what's going on beyond that quick 15 minute appointment? And yeah. so I'd say, why don't you come back? And so I was having patients come back for visits. And I had this one patient say to me, you know what, Dr. Rena? After that first visit, I went out to my car and I cried mm. because you were the only doctor that ever asked me those kinds of questions. And I get a little choked up when I tell that story because when mm. she came back and told me that, I said, okay, this is what I need to do. And I clearly can't do it in the hamster wheel conventional medical model. So right. I took a huge leap of faith. And even though I ran a very successful OBGYN practice, yeah. I handed in my resignation. Wow. Another place to go. <laughs> um, I worked um, for a couple of years in an integrative practice. And then in February of 2020, I opened my own um, practice, practice called Waves of Awakening Center mm -hmm. for Personalized Medicine because I had my awakening and I wanted other people to have theirs. Right. So it was three weeks before COVID and the world shut down. So we very quickly navigated that and telehealth and all of that. But in that process of, of COVID and shutdown, and you weren't able to go to conferences, I really got more information on women's sexual health and intimacy and was introduced. We can talk about um, technology called Cleovana because I, I'm so passionate about having women not be told you're just getting older. Right. Yeah, this is what to expect. No, we, we age because our nutrients and hormones decline. Exactly. So let's look at that. Let's support it. Let's fill the cracks and holes in the foundation so that you can feel optimally. Yeah. You know, I, I, I went through the same thing. Like I ended up going through perimenopause at 39 years old, really young. And at first mm -hmm. I didn't even know what I was going through because I was having all these symptoms and I was too young to be going through menopause, you know, perimenopause. And, sure. you know, the first thing I did, I went to my OBGYN and she wanted to put me on, she wanted to put me on birth control. I said, no, I can't go on birth control. There were so many side effects to birth control and it wasn't going to do anything for me, except maybe I'll gain a little weight, you know? And I said, this is not the answer. 
So then I went to a functional medicine doctor and boy, what a difference. They check you for everything that an MD or, you know, OBGYN doesn't check you for. And it was great because I found out all the things that I was deficient in, I found out how my hormones were functioning. And I found out that, you know, my progesterone and my testosterone, I barely had any left. You know, mm-hmm. and these are why I was getting all these symptoms and I was getting fatigue and my and my menstruation cycle was going haywire because, you know, all my hormones weren't balanced and I was deficient in certain vitamins and supplements. And, you know, once my functional medicine doctor got me balanced, it was like I felt like a totally different person. I felt like I was 20 years younger. So, you know, how do you go about it when patients come in and they're saying, I feel fatigue, my periods are really long, my, you know, or I'm menstruating really heavy, you know, yes. and they don't know what's happening. Hot flashes are occurring, you know, <laughs> explain to what, what's, what's going on. What's going I, on? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, I love seeing women to talk about this. And to your point, perimenopause, which is that time we can be. 10 to 15 years before we hit menopause, which is a full year without a period. So it can be in our mid to late thirties. What's happening to your point, right? Estrogen's kind of going up and down month to month, progesterone starting to take a a slow um, decline and testosterone sometimes maybe taking a slow decline. And, And one of the reasons that is, is because it's driven down by cortisol. So cortisol is our stress hormone, right? Yes. It's our fight or flight hormone. Mm-hmm. It makes us the best, you know, version of ourselves. It makes right. us the super women that we are with 50,000 balls in the air, yeah. whether it's work, kids, spouse, whatever's going on. But that cortisol is meant for short bursts, right? Mm-hmm. It's meant yeah. for literally running from a saber to tiger, saving my life and then going. Exactly. But our reality is we live in fight or flight if not 24 seven, many more hours in the day. So cortisol needs to be pumped out. We need to survive. Where does testosterone go? In the toilet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I often um, tell women, and I work with women, 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond, we have to think about all of these hormones like a symphony. Okay. So if you picture a symphony up on stage, you have the wind, you have the string, you have the percussion. They're all playing beautiful music together, right? Right. So we need to think about our hormones in that same way. So yes, it's estrogen, it's progesterone, it's testosterone, but it's also glucose and insulin. Yeah. So we have to talk about food, nutrition, all of that. Oh, it's our definitely. thyroid gland in our neck, which is, you know, our metabolism yes. and it's cortisol. Yeah. So if all those players are up on the stage and cortisol is playing really, really fast. The thyroid eh, is kind of there, kind of not. And then the perimenopausal hormones, it's really more of a garage band and Mm. not so much a symphony. So we always look at that to your point, right? Do comprehensive testing. That may be blood work, that may be saliva, but find out what is unique to you and optimize that. Yes. You know, I get, you know, people don't understand too, that nutrition plays a big role also, you know, you can go to a functional medicine doctor and they can tell you what you're deficient in and you know what you need. And you can go home with all these different things and you can order your, your um, hormones. But if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not getting sufficient enough of sleep, if you're not eating the right foods, you know, it's not going to do very good for you. You know, you're not going to get the ultimate satisfaction that you could be receiving if you don't take care of yourself. Because whatever you put in your body, if your body doesn't understand what it is, it stores it. And when it stores it, you know, it's slowing down your organs. It's making you feel sluggish. So not only are your lack of your hormones making you feel this way, the foods that you're eating can make you feel this way. So it's really a combination of taking care of yourself, don't you think? And and taking the hormones and the vitamins and the supplements you need so forth. A hundred percent. You know, we have to think about all of the health pillars, nutrition being one, detoxification, as you mentioned, our bodies get stuffed up, junked up just with life and what we're exposed to and what we're putting in our bodies, whether that's food or beauty products or anything. So 
nutrition, detoxing, we have to, we have to move our bodies, even if we don't like it, fitness is really important. It is balancing, right? These are all crucial health pillars. The challenge is we, you know, we live in a, in a culture where it's go, go, go. Yeah. So, you know, I I gotta go, I gotta stop quick and get some fast food or convenience. Right. And then that's really, unfortunately made our digestive health, um, so much, at risk and yeah. poor, right? We are, oh, we are a country that's sort of, you know, sick, yeah. overweight or obese, mm-hmm. you know, diabetic, high yeah. blood pressure. And so when we just focus on nutrition, if you're just going to focus on one thing, that can be a complete game changer in your health. Happy, happy nutrition, happy gut, as you oh, know, 100%. happy brain, yeah. happy nutrition and gut, happier hormones. Happy gut, better immune system, right? right? Oh, Coming definitely. out of a pandemic, everybody's talking about how to strengthen my immune system. Well, the reality is we have to look inward if we're going to do that, right? And exactly. our self and how we take care of ourselves. Exactly. People don't realize when you talk about the leaky gut syndrome and you talk about the root cause of things, it all goes back to the gut. It all goes back to how we're taking care of ourselves. And the foods that are going inside, you know, balancing the good probiotics with the bad, you know, and, and, you know, your body has to be balanced. And when you, you buy, even if you if you see those lean cuisines and, you, and it looks healthy, it's all processed. And if you turn it around and you see all the things that are actually in it, you're like, you know, you're actually doing worse to your body. When I started detoxifying, I felt so much better. I felt like a new person. I felt so energetic. I felt so much healthier when I got those toxins out of my body. I think that was step one for me. You know, that was like, it made me feel like a new person, just detoxifying my body, getting those bad toxins out of my body. It's so true. And, you know, unfortunately, it's really, we don't know what we don't know, right? When I was in my 20s and in medical school and all stressed out, yeah, I want my quick meal. So I was getting my lean cuisines, right? And I was doing this and, you know, we don't know. So there, there's no, so much don't. lacking education out there. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong. It's an information highway, but what is good and what isn't. And a lot of times what I find is missing it for people is accountability or mentorship, right? right? Because you can do this or you can do that. But if you're trying to do it on your own and is there misinformation, then it doesn't always work out so well. Right. Now, as you're getting older, you know, we become deficient. And, you know, our hormones start to slow down, you know, we're not producing as much, you know, um, we're uh, everything, you know, our, you know, our, the vitamins in our body, the nutrients in our body, you know, we, we become more deficient. That's why you see some women, their hair starts to thin out as they get older. And even like when we talk about sexual health and intimacy, you'll notice a, you know, I notice a huge change as I got older. You know, if, if women have a harder time, you know, receiving or, or an orgasm or just the desire to to make love with somebody declines because yeah. of, you know, the your hormones are changing and you don't feel the same way. And, you know, men also experience a lot of erectile dysfunction as they get older because mm-hmm. of the lack of testosterone in their body. And what can they do if they come to you and they say, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble with my husband or, you know, the, our relationship isn't the same like it was when we were younger, you know, explain to people why they might be experiencing these things. Sure. That's a great question. And I see women all the time who struggle with this. You know, they come in, Dr. Arena, I have no libido or sex is painful. And if it's painful, then we avoid it. And then yeah. that just gets, you know, it just, just has the snowball effect. Right. Right. So. Mm-hmm. To your point, as we mentioned, hormones decline, nutrients decline, hormones decline, specifically, you know, to the vagina, estrogen, right? Yeah. Estradiol, that's our most potent estrogen, the estrogen that makes us feel like women, right? It helps our skin glow. It helps the blood flow specifically to the vagina, right? So if that's going low, our vagina might not feel so great, right? Right. And so if blood flow and nerve endings are de- decreasing down there. If you are having sex, it may take longer to achieve an orgasm or not get it at all. So when I talk about 
um, with women about libido and intimacy as we age. I sort of say it's a it's a multi layered approach. Mm -hmm. We have to start with you and how you feel about yourself. And we touched on that. If I'm not feeling good, I'm not taking care of my body. I don't feel like sharing with right. a partner. So mm -hmm. it's number one is how I feel about myself. Number two is what's going on with my vagina. Right. Is it painful? Is it dry? Did it shrink? Is there some scarring from childbirth? What's going right. on? Number three is, do I like my partner? in this moment in time. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that can wax and wane. Um, then there's, did I sleep last night? Right. right. Because, uh, you know, our, our sleep hygiene isn't optimal. We think that, you know, scrolling on net, at Netflix or our phone or something like that is downtime, but it's really disrupting our sleep. 100%. And then to your point, what's on my sticky note, my to-do list, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. who's in the house? Because COVID brought a lot of adult children home in the house. People, you know, stayed together. So right. it's really multi-layered. Yes, working on self, vagina, whether that's with hormone replacement or some of the technologies like Cleovana and the O-Shot. Sometimes it's pelvic floor physical therapy, believe it or not, which can yeah. have tremendous results, you know? So it depends on the individual and what layers we need to address. Right. Now with the O-Shot, you know, many people don't realize that maybe you could explain more in detail, but it really can help a woman feel more sensation down below in their vagina. And it can actually help them achieve an orgasm because they're feeling they're, they're able to eas more easily reach climax because they're more sensitive and now they can feel, you know, the sensations that they might have not felt previously. So can you explain to people what an, what an O-Shot is? Sure. The O-Shot is what's called PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. So that is the, it's the process where we draw your blood from your arm, spin it down and get the platelet-rich plasma that's filled with growth factors and stem cells. Now that's been used in many other industries, um, most often in the sports world, right? Because when we inject growth factors and stem cells, it's wound healing. Right. So I'm sure in the NHL and the NFL and all of that, people are using PRP, shoulders, knees, all of that. It's used in the aesthetics world. It's used for hair loss. In the in the gynecology world, it's called the O-shot because mm -hmm. we use those platelets and growth factors, the platelet-rich plasma in two places. We put it at the clitoris and inside the vagina. Mm -hmm. So at the clitoris, yes, for improved sexual you know, intimacy, orgasm, and also into the vagina because it can help with the bladder, which is another right. thing that happens as we age in menopause, yeah. right? Got to go, got to go, urgency, leaking, all of those sorts of things. So it, it works in two ways. And having said that, I have still have patients who say it doesn't just work for that, also for lubrication, also for pain. So there's right. many benefits. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of people, you know, are a little afraid because they don't know a lot about it. But so many people have received such a positive impact from the O shot because, like you said, it helps in so many different ways. And as you get older, you're, you're experiencing less sensation sometimes, or dryness down below, or you know, you're not you're not feeling the sensation when you're having intercourse as much, you know, and right. it, you know, and even incontinence, you know, um, you know, you know, sometimes you might sneeze, a woman might sneeze. And they might get a little leakage and, you know, the O shot could actually help with all these things. So it's like, yeah. it, it helps with so many, so many different things. And, you know, people get scared when they hear, you know, the O shot, but it, you know, they use a numbing cream. So you really don't yes. feel anything. There's a, there's a, a, a stepwise process. And again, I don't talk about anything that I haven't checked out myself and done. So yeah. there is a numbing process with a really good cream we use ice, we do lidocaine, which is a common number for many procedures. Right. And I will tell you, right. And education on what you're going to feel. And it's really not that challenging at all. 
Yes, you know, I I am all for the O shot. I've known so many people that have used the O shot and have mm-hmm. had, you know, have had great satisfaction with the O shot, you know, and yes. uh, even with myself, you know, I experienced after my three children, you know, after I had, I had three C-sections and my body changed completely and I became numb down below. And I went and I did my research and I had the O shot and mm-hmm. it brought sensation back down in my vaginal canal. And it, you know, it, it, it wasn't painful and I saw a huge change. And even with incontinence, lubrication, everything, it, my yes. whole body down below changed. You know, it was such an improvement and you didn't really feel anything because of the numbing cream, you know, and, you know, the person who's doing it, you know, if you have a good doctor, you're going to have, you know, a great experience and it lasts a very long time. And, yes. you know, now you talk about, um, what was the other one? Uh, uh, Cleovana. Cleovana. I, I was thinking about it, but I, I couldn't pronounce it right. I'm thinking, okay, okay. You know, but <laughs> um, with that, can you explain to people what that is? Sure. So Cleovana is a completely non-invasive, so different than the O-Shot, um, sound wave technology that again, brings blood flow, improves blood flow, new blood vessels, new nerve endings to the area. So it focuses mainly on the clitoris. Okay. And so it's, it's four treatments twice a week for two weeks. And the treatments are only 10 minutes. And what it does, it's a three-step process. It brings with gentle suction on the outside blood flow again to the area. And then we use sound wave technology to the area. But what's interesting is we do it all around the vulvar area because I don't have with me today the little anatomy of the clitoris. We think it's a little bud, but it actually has arms and legs that go down on the side. So we want to treat that. So we do gentle suction at the clitoral area, and then we do the sound wave treatment all up and down. And then the third step, is sort of vibration where we're sort of draining what we brought in there, draining into the lymph nodes. And again, a wonderful technology, non-invasive, 10 minutes in and out of the office, twice a week for two weeks, great improvement in frequency and intensity of orgasm, pain, lubrication, and beyond. Even for Cleovana, I've had patients say there's been bladder improvement as well. Oh, really? Yes. So the wave treatment, why is it so successful? Like what is it doing to the body when you do this wave treatment? Because it's bringing, as, as we mentioned, as we age, yeah, that blood flow isn't there and the nerve right. endings aren't there. So right, it might take longer to achieve that orgasm. So this is stimulating all of that, increasing the blood flow of the nerve endings. And anytime we do that, things are going to get better wherever it is in the body, but bringing it into the vagina, bring it to the clitoral area to the vulvar area, yeah, you're gonna see some great improvement. Now is one effective, more effective than the other, the O-Shot versus Cleavana? Great question, because I get asked this all the time, which one should I do? Yeah. Um, You know, initially um, I felt like the O-Shot, if someone's issues were more bladder or urinary related, then I thought the O-Shot was good because you're getting both. But I will say with the Cleavana, I am seeing some anecdotal improvement in bladder. Okay. Some women say, you know what? I want to do both. Let's space them out. Let me start right. with, you know, a Cleovana treatment. And six weeks later, let's do my O-shot. So we can hit it from different ways to get the best success. Okay. So you could do both. It doesn't have yes. to be one or the other. You could actually do both treatments and it's fine for the body. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are so many women out there that experience all the things we've been talking about, but they're so embarrassed to go to a doctor and share this information with them. Now, you know, what do you tell these people, you know, and how do you explain to these people that they're not the only one that after a certain age, most women are experienced this? Like, what do you tell people? Like, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that just you are afraid to come to the doctor because they're embarrassed. Right. And even, even, Trained gynecologists are embarrassed to have that conversation because we don't necessarily get those, those the tools and the education. Yeah. So I really try to um, comfort women and say, this is a really big 
topic of conversation. When I was first practicing, I was going to conferences trying to find that magic bullet for women, that libido bullet, this for, you know, myself, for my patients, for everybody. And then I sort of learned, okay, there's no magic pill, right? It's multifactorial, like we talked about, but yeah, it also normalize it, right? Mm -hmm. So many women struggle with it. You think yeah. because whatever's out on, you know, the front of Cosmopolitan magazine that we're all supposed to be having sex, you know, five times a week or whatever, or multiple times a day, right? Everybody's reality is different. Everybody's relationship is different, right? You know? So, but if there's a, if there's a, a, a problem with it, how do we address it? What in right. that layer? And I, I always tell patients too, I say, go home and blame me. Tell your partner, oh, Dr. Rena was talking all about this today. And so it opens up the door for that conversation or Dr. Rena gave me this, like these things of lube to try. Right. Again, opens up the conversation. Partner might be like, hmm, Okay. So I say, I'll take the blame for the awkward <laughs> I think, you know, it's, I think it's hard for men to understand because their bodies are so different and they go through uh, a totally different experience than we do. And they don't, a lot of times they don't get it. You know, it could be, you could be married to your, your partner for 20, 30, 40 years. And I think a lot of them are still oblivious to how a woman functions. You know, <laughs> they think we're just like men, you know, and we're not, you know, you know, um, you know, get into a point of stimulation and get into a point of actually experience an orgasm if they experience an orgasm, because not a lot of women have intercourse and they don't experience orgasm. I was speaking with someone. The majority. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, it might be a good thing if, if, a, if a couple sits down with each other and explains and maybe, you know, have a better communication so they understand where their partner is coming from because they're very different species. Very different. And again, a, a man can probably go to his primary care and say, I'm having a couple issues. Okay, here's here's your you know prescription medication, and you're good to go. Whereas because it's 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 more normalized, right? You yeah. see it out there, you see it on TV and commercials, and this and that, and that's normal because um, forty percent of men by age forty have some sort of erectile dysfunction, and sixty percent by age sixty. Right. So, it, and it's talked about, and it's advertised, and there's twenty six different FDA you know approved medications for that. So it's, it's, it's out there for, for women. We're working on it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now with, with men, they do have the P shot and, you know, yes. maybe you can explain to, you know, some men what the P shot is because the P shot is a very effective, you know, um, procedure as well. Yes. Yeah, so just like the O shot, um, they gave it the name P shot for the penis and it's same thing. It's drawing blood from your arm spinning it down, getting that platelet rich plasma. And then it's paced, it's placed around uh, the penis again for the same benefit, growth factor, stem cells, blood flow, nerve endings. Yes. Now, I yeah. was... Couples can do a, a combo. Yeah. <laughs> a combo date. A combo date. Exactly. One goes in one. No downtime and go out to dinner after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, when they go for an O shot, does it does it does the effects happen right away, or does it take some time for it to actually take effect? Great question. Um, it can, but the studies show that it may take up to three months to see what's optimally going to be there. But then it doesn't stop at three months, as we were saying. It can continue on. Some, um, in my experience, some feel like after a year they may notice benefits might be waning. And so they might come in and do another O shot. Okay. But yeah, it, so with O shot, it can be right away. And sometimes with Cleovana, even between the first and fourth treatment, I've had women say, I've definitely noticed a difference in lubrication and we haven't even finished the treatments. Right. And then from beyond continued benefits. Now, I know a lot of women that they're experiencing hot flashes, they're experiencing a lot of things caused by menopause, but they're so afraid to try hormone therapy and they're so afraid to try these new things. What do you tell <laughs> someone that's so fearful, but yet they're going through so many different, you know, symptoms of menopause and it's very uncomfortable for them. How do you get them to understand that it, it's not dangerous and if it's monitored properly, it's okay. 
you are singing my song, my friend. So <laughs> education, education, education. So what has happened, as I'm sure you're aware, right, is, you know, our mother and grandmother's generation, there was hormone replacement therapy and they all went on it and no one saw, thought anything about it. Here, here's your, you know, have a, have a nice life. Well, in 2002, the Women's Health Initiative came out with a report that said, whoa, hormone replacement therapy is bad. Slightly, mind you, slightly increased risk of breast cancer, cardiovascular events, blood clots. They didn't really talk still about the benefit of decreased risk of colon cancer, Alzheimer's. So the pendulum swung, hormone replacement therapy became bad and everyone was gonna get breast cancer, which was tragic right. for women worldwide. What has happened in the 20 years is they have dissected that study several times right. and have peeled away that, okay, it's not all bad. That study population was, you know, an older population in their 60s. They were smokers. They were initiating hormone therapy at that time. Right. So as we, as we peel it away, we realize, okay, not so bad. And that was also what's called synthetic hormone replacement therapy, not the same chemical structure. Right. That our body makes. So what is the difference between that and what we call bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? That gets a label. Ooh, you're doing that? What's that? Right. All that means is the same chemical structure that our bodies make. Right. right. So to your point, right, we test, we don't guess, and we optimize because the reality is estrogen protects our brains, mm -hmm. protects our bones, protects our heart. And right. the number one killer for women is still heart disease. Yeah. I know breast cancer is real and it's out there, but heart disease. Mm -hmm. And if you think about every corner, there's a memory center and an Alzheimer's care center being built. Right. Because look what's happening to our brains. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. optimizing, supporting what's low is to me, um, it, 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 it seems like there is no other option. But yeah. respectfully, to, to answer your question, I educate and educate and educate. Not everybody is a candidate. And that's right. why we test and we don't guess because right. someone can actually have too high estrogen levels in menopause, yeah. even though we think they're low. So we have to detoxify them. Yes, they are at risk exactly. for breast cancer, right? Yeah. We have to balance with progesterone, which is nature's Valium. Estrogen right. and progesterone are dance partners. They want to be balanced, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So testing is key, not here's your prescription. See you later. What is customized to you because you are unique. Right. And everybody, you know, from my own personal experience and from working with other functional medicine doctors, everybody has a different dosage. Everybody has, you know, they're doing it differently according to what their body needs. And so yes. it's actually an individual you know, the, a pers personalized um, treatment for each individual. It's not like one standard fixed um, treatment, correct? Right. It's not cookie cutter, right? And I, I work with my patients. I have a very large um, hormone replacement uh, practice. And I say, you know, the art and the science are what we need to, you know, yes, here's your test. These are the numbers, but how are you feeling and mm -hmm. what's going on? Right. And then let's customize, right? right? And then we are not robots. Life changes, stressors change. So therefore needs change. So right. we're, we are changing doses throughout, yes. you know, the lifetime. And you know, I, I find when I go into stores now, I see supplements for progesterone and testosterone. And, you know, it, it upsets me because it could be so harmful to the body if it's not monitored right and you don't know what the quality is in these in this testosterone and progesterone you don't know where it's coming from how it's made and if it's too much testosterone goes in your body or too much progesterone problems can seriously occur and they are other supplements too that can increase the estrogen but it could be very dangerous and you know explain to people how dangerous if you're not monitored by you know right. a, a practitioner a, a functional medicine doctor if you're not function you know if you're not monitored by a professional it could be very dangerous very dangerous absolutely you know you brought up a lot of points we are are starving to feel better mm -hmm. and we're grasping at it and you know, um, the media and companies want to put things out there for people, but we have to be really careful about where they're sourced, how they're tested, what the ingredients are, you know, whether it's your 
hormones you're getting over the counter or your nutrients and supplements. And I tell people, I love Target, but respectfully, I'm not going to buy my nutrients and supplements or whatever hormone cream they're selling from Target right. or from Amazon, because I know that they're not third party tested. And I know that, you know, one bottle might not be the same as the next and the next. So customizing, because if you're doing that, they can be dangerous. If you're overloading yourself with hormones and you haven't detoxified and your liver's not processing it and you're not pooping every day, you're, you are putting yourself at risk right. for breast cancer and other, you know, estrogen dominant cancers. So, so important to do it the right way and the safe way. Right. And, you know, when, when you get a prescription from your functional medicine doctor, there is a special pharmaceutical company that you call and they make the specific prescription for you according to what your functional medicine doctor has prescribed. Correct? Yes. Yes. There are, there are, um, excellent compounding pharmacies across the country mm -hmm. that, um, that specialize in this. This is what they do. And so they create your unique prescription. Absolutely. And, you know, what I like about functional medicine doctors is that they, they also look to prevent. If they see things that might be a little off, they're looking before the problem occurs, where doctors treat you when the problem is there. But functional medicine doctors try to see if something is not right. They try to address it before it actually becomes a problem. And that's what I like. Can you go into that a little further? Completely. You know, having grown up in the conventional medical model, I can speak to it a hundred percent. We are trained. What are your symptoms? Here's your diagnosis. Here's your pill for your ill, right? right. Here's your pharmaceutical. Instead of, well, how did we get there? Yeah. Right. You know, a perfect example is diabetes. Mm -hmm. Oh, your blood sugar. Oh, it's getting a little high. Oh, it's still okay. Oh, it's still okay. Oh, it's still okay. Oh, we're diabetic. Here's your insulin, right? right? But if we took the years before then, even, you know, two months, six months, we can reverse yeah. with how you live your life with your diet, with moving your body. I've had patients get off their insulin. Those that were pre-diabetic are no longer at risk, right? right? Because functionally, Let's get to the root cause. Let's prevent. Yeah. You know, we do a great job of saving lives conventionally, but to your point, not in prevention or longevity. Right. You know, it's like, oh, I'm just getting older, or my family has this and I'm doomed to it. Well, yes. you no, know, you may have a genetic predisposition, but you know, 90% of illness and even cancer is not genetic. It's right. due to our environment and how we live our lives. You know, the term epigenetics, we have yeah. the ability to turn on and off those genes with how we live our lives, but we have to take some ownership. And that's where yes. the, the trick. The exactly. Is. And I've taught, taught people that so many times and they just don't want to hear it sometimes because they, they think because their aunt or uncle or mother has it that, you know, this is meant for them to happen. But if they change their lifestyle and they change and they do certain things accordingly, they can actually break the cycle and help their body so they don't have to suffer like their ancestors or their mother or their aunts and uncles. Because you know, things can change if you find out what you're deficient in or what's going on in your body with the proper care and the proper, you know, um supplements, nutrients, hormones, whatever the case may be. With, you know, with the proper care, you could actually improve your, 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 your um, condition or even prevent it from happening, you know, in the future, you know, that we're not just because our family has, it doesn't mean that we have, you know, are going to have it. And if we're starting to see symptoms, we could do things, you know, to either decrease it or stop it. Yes. You know, another great example of um, a vitamin that gets low, that's a game changer is vitamin D. Yeah, there's a huge normal range for vitamin D. And if you're hanging out anywhere a little low or low, oh, okay, that's fine. But then there's an optimal range for vitamin D. When, right. when our vitamin D is optimal, we decrease our risk of breast cancer, colon cancer, heart disease, dementia, diabetes. Even right. in the COVID world, they're saying those that have better vitamin D levels do well with COVID. I had a one patient, all we did was optimize her vitamin D. And she said, you know what, Dr. Arena, I went into work and my coworker said, 
I walk with my head up now instead of my head down. Yeah. And right, that, that just warms your heart. All it we does. did was optimize her vitamin D. There's no magic potion or lotion or prescription for that. Yeah. Go out in the sunshine, right? Most people are deficient in vitamin D. They don't realize that, you know, it's, it's so good to have at least, I would say, what do you think about 5,000 IU, which is what one, depending on the bottle they're taking, you know, and when, when people are taking medications or taking supplements, what, like explain to them that, you know, just every, any supplement on the counter is, is not a good thing. You know, it, explain to them the difference between a quality supplement or a vitamin versus, you know, something they're going to get in Sam's Club and they don't even know who's making it or what's in it. Right. So you, you really want to um, get your nutrients and supplements from high quality sourced companies, third party tested. They aren't stored in a, in a you know, a 90 or 100 degree warehouse. Right. There are a lot of um, online um, sources for that. There's companies you know, on our website, we use full scripts, we use whole scripts, because I know the companies, I trust the companies, I know where it's being made, right. versus just going out, because what we do, oh, oh, my friend takes this, and it works for her, so I'm going to go buy it, where am right. I buying it, and what is it, and is it even relevant to my body, but exactly. we're, we're striving to feel better, so we're desperate, and then we have our bucket of supplements, right, right, <laughs> You know, and, you know, and, and even sometimes, you know, people always are grabbing a pill. You can, you know, some people want to, you know, they get, they can't get a good night's sleep, but they're not, they, they don't know how to rest. They don't know how to ease their mind. Something like magnesium and potassium could help a person calm down at night and go to sleep instead of taking, you know, like a sleeping pill, like Ambien or, or a Xanax, you know, and people have to know where there are other alternatives that are, you know, could be just as good. Right. You know, magnesium is my favorite nutrient. I joke that I'm going to have a t-shirt that says, don't fear the mag. Yeah. I love magnesium. Involved, right. You know, it's involved in over 400 functions in our body and yeah. we chew it up with stress, mm -hmm. right? It calms the brain. It calms the muscles. It calms the gut. It helps yes. us with sleep. So I tell everybody, magnesium, magnesium, whether you get it in a supplement, you get it in your foods with pumpkin seeds, you yeah. take an Epsom salt bath, right? You know, anything to sort of get in our magnesium. The only, if you take too much, your stools might get too loose. Right. Well, for many people, that's a good thing if they're not pooping every day, yeah. but then, you know, just back it down. So magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. And so many people suffer from constipation, but they don't realize that they're not, maybe they're not drinking enough of water. They're not eating the right foods. Maybe they should add a little spinach to their diet, even movement. You drink water and you're walking. That could actually help you yes. to go to the bathroom, you know? Yes. Yes. I tell my, everybody I meet, I say, I'm a stickler about sleep and poop. So if you're not pooping every day, you're leaving here with some magnesium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Exactly. And magnesium is great for constipation when you're not going regularly. Magnesium yes. is excellent for, for uh, going to the bathroom regularly. I like yes. magnesium for that. It, yes. I think it works great. But, you know, I, I love everything that you shared today. And, and, you know, if someone is having trouble, you know, relationship wise, or they're not feeling uncomfortable when they're, um, when they're having intercourse, or they just lost the urge, what do you tell these people? What's, what's some of the advice that you can give these individuals? Because some people don't even know what a functional medicine doctor is. You know, maybe right. you can share some information that would help people. Right. Well, I would first say, don't give up. And don't be satisfied with being told you're just getting older. You know, we have to be our own advocates for right. our health and our care. And that's where doing research comes out. And that's where, you know, the keyboard warrior comes out. To your point, not everything is great. But right, looking into, um, looking at integrative and functional medicine practices in your area, you know, an integrative gynecologist, someone who, you know, is going to go down that road of intimacy because most primary cares might not have the experience or the wheelhouse either. Right. Um, I, I'm happy to see people in my clinic or refer. If you go the Institute for Functional Medicine website, they have a directory, um, the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine has providers listed as well. And you know, Google and Facebook are getting better. I often ask um, people how they find me and they say, you know, internet search. 
So if you start putting in the right terms in, in you know, Google, Dr. Google, my nemesis, but right. it's good for some things. If you start to put those terms in, then you might be able to find a provider in your area. But like I said, someone who's going to do that multi, you know, level approach, right. and not just say, there's nothing I can do. You're just getting older. Right. And, you know, I, I think too, because we, when you get a deficient in certain hormones and vitamins, your mood changes and you might, you might look at your husband or wife or your partner and say, oh, I don't want to have sex with them. I don't want to get intimate with them. I don't feel like, you know, doing this or that or the other thing. And it could be all from deficiency in hormones or vitamins yes. or supplements, correct? Yes. Or it could be my, I feel better because I'm pooping every day and I'm sleeping right and now. I like myself and I like you better. I mean, right. something as simple as that, right? Exactly. Because, you know, nobody wants to have sex if it's going to be painful sex. So or if they're bloated <laughs> or if they're bloated, exactly. And, you know, just by being constipated, that could cause painful sex, correct? Yes. So, you know, these are things people have to think about. And, you know, um, if someone wants to find you or learn more, or ask you questions or come to you, where can they find you? Sure. So my practice is called Waves of Awakening Center for Personalized Medicine. We are located in the Northeast, um, south of Boston, but we do do telehealth. So you can find us on the web there. Um, info at wavesofawakening.com is an email um, we are on social media, on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to reach out. I'm I'm passionate about helping women. So if I can't help you, then I will, you know, refer you to someone who can. That's great. Thank you so much for everything. You've been such a help, you know, and, you know, I love the fact that you're telling women not to give up, that they are alternatives, that they, you know, people can, you know, improve the way they feel, they can improve their sex lives, they can improve their lives and their health overall, with just by making some simple changes in their life. And, you know, thank you very much for being on the show. And once again, just tell people your website, just so they remember it. Sure. It's wavesofawakening.com. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, My you're pleasure. very welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Arena, for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks.